being included in the boys club yeah. Yeah. was really affirming yeah, for me. I could see that. Um, and all of them were so, I mean, they're my bestest friends now. Yeah. Hey. Um, there's like a, a <laughs> they're not my best friend. They're my bestest <laughs> friends. Okay, welcome back to our final episode of Interview With My Kid of the season. We will be back. So this is Interview With My Kid. I'm Jesse Sullivan, and this is my kid. Arlo. This is our 10th episode and our season finale, and I'm so excited, and I'm so excited and thankful for everyone who's been watching and listening. We appreciate you more than you know. Yep. This episode is so important to us because it's our last one, and our guest is one of my favorite humans on this planet. But I also wore this shirt because I felt like it was fitting for our final episode. So, mm -hmm. but Arlo, you know, we've, you're 14 years old. You just turned 14. Mm -hmm. What has this been like doing this podcast and this show and everything as a 14 year old? Like, how has this journey been for you? It's been really fun and just meeting new people and hearing mm -hmm. everybody's experiences has been really awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like almost we've made like more friends doing mm -hmm. this than anything else. Oh and yeah, like absolutely. Some of the conversations we've had, I feel like I'm going to keep with me for the rest of my life. Like yeah. they've like stuck with me. Like they've even like mm -hmm. changed my viewpoint on, on some things. So yeah, they've been awesome. Yeah. So our next guest plays, he's an actor and he plays Ash in Pretty Little Liars Original Sin. And he's also my best friend. So welcome on set, Jordan Gonzalez. Welcome. <laughs> What's up, fam? <laughs> what up? How we what doing? Up? So how have you been? I haven't seen you in a minute because we've both been so busy, but yeah. your show just came out. So this is like a big, big deal. Like mm -hmm. what's going on? How has this been? How does this all feel? It's hard to even put into words, honestly. I mean, yeah. if you would have asked me even a year ago before I booked the show, yeah. if this would be happening right now, I would have said no. No, I mean, I remember like I've watched your journey, like you going from like just starting to audition and like starting to book things to all of a sudden you telling me, yeah, I just booked Pretty Little Lives. I remember I like, that. Yeah, yeah. I, like, we went to dinner. Yeah, yeah, we went to dinner and we yeah. just like discussed life. And I remember that moment very, very clear. Mm. It's crazy. I mean, like, you know, Ash, my character on the show, is an openly transgender boy in high school. He's mm -hmm. 16 um, in a small mining town called Millwood, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. um, he has been out for quite a bit of time. He is the leader of the LGBTQ plus group on campus called okay. Spectrum. Um, and he is the love interest to one of the new Little Liars, Minnie Mouse on Rada. Mm -hmm. And that's Malia, who you introduced me to, who's amazing. Mm -hmm. What what was it like, like meeting her and having that kind of like love interest on set? Like, what was that like for you two? It was really special because, you know, like, it was my first on-screen kiss ever. Mm -hmm. If you haven't watched the episodes, you gotta kiss. <laughs> but we kiss. Um, and it was really special because we sat down beforehand and we talked about how massive this representation was for right. two openly queer individuals yeah. to play two openly queer characters mm -hmm. on HBO Max. Yeah, is so many eyes on that. So many eyes on mm -hmm. that. And yeah. so we wanted to make sure, specifically in a horror-based genre show, that those things were handled with care. Right. Specifically in a horror-based genre show, you know, they do a lot of queer people dirty sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we wanted to recognize that this was gonna be seen by a lot of people. Our yeah. demographic is high school, you know, right. if not younger. Yeah. Um, and we wanted to make sure that it was proper representation right. because it is a radical thing. I, I, I know we didn't grow up with any trans masculine characters no, in the media? None. I didn't even like, I, I've always said like, I didn't even know the word because I just, there was nobody even telling me that word. No, I, I mean, I grew up in Georgia in a small yeah. part outside of Atlanta, 45 minutes, went to Catholic school my entire life. Yeah. I, I didn't have the word for it either. And I mean, you grew up here and mm -hmm. for you to not have the word out here is like crazy for yeah, me to even Yeah, because Orange County is so different than LA. Right. Like if I were to, were to grow up in LA, I think I probably would have like transitioned when I was really young. Like it's so vastly different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But OC is basically Georgia, so. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Literally, yeah. very, very different. <laughs> but yeah, so, so when you, okay, I remember when you were like booking this role and I remember like us talking about like how big this could be. Mm -hmm. And do you feel like it's lived up to that? Like, do you feel this like difference, like since the show aired? Yes and no. I mean, I recognize that this platform is massive right. and that, you know, the IP for Pretty Little Liars in general 
is massive. The yeah. fan base is some of the best fans that I've ever interacted with. Right. And I can't drive down the street without seeing the five liars faces. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. I, I'm driving all over LA. And I'm like, hey, Malia. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Malia. Hey, Bailey. Hey, yeah. Riley. Hey, all the girls, you know, yeah. like, and they're plastered across the HBO building, which yeah. is like it's massive. 30 stories high, yeah. you know, it's like, yeah. it's very surreal because like, I still look at those billboards and I'm like, you're in that show. <laughs> I'm doing that. That's yeah. crazy. Like I'm doing that right now. I I've worked every job under the sun. You know this. Like yeah, yeah. I, you're I never always thought I was working be an actor. so many different jobs, and it's like I feel like. I, I also, like I feel like a lot of actors have like years and years and years before they get that big role like that, and you got it pretty quick. Like, yeah, and I recognize like that's not the norm, and this industry is brutal, and you yeah. have to have some really thick skin. I got some really hard nose. I got mm-hmm. close to a lot of things that I thought were gonna be you know, breaking out for me yeah. and I didn't get them and they were heartbreaking. And yeah. I, I understand that my career path is, is not the norm for a lot of people, but it's not to say that there's not room for, for a bunch of us at the table. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And it, when you auditioned for Ash, did you know he was trans? Like, did. did they, did they kind of almost like put you up for that because you also were, or was, were they just kind of like, like, how did that work? Yeah. So Ash was always specifically a trans masculine character. Okay. Um, so they were only reading trans masculine identifying people. That's good. Which is great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Which is a great shift that I've seen within the industry, right. which we know was not always the norm. No. Um, if you, you guys have watched Disclosure, right? Yeah. Um, trans masculine people are the least represented in the media. Right. And they were often played by cis women. Yeah. Um, and it's just really cool to be a part of a movement where they're, they're casting authentically yeah. trans characters because it's it's such a specific lived experience yeah and i mean it's happening like you're going to be one of the like forerunners to during this movement like this is happening right now so like your character and like other people who are doing this over maybe like i would say like the last two years maybe yeah it's like still i couldn't like i can think of like five maybe yeah. at the top of my head like it's still so so new mm-hmm. so i feel like your character especially considering that the viewers are so young i think it's going to be like pretty revolutionary yeah and i think the most unique part about Ash is that he doesn't talk about his transness until episode eight. I was going to ask that. And it's funny because like in the episode one where Mouse and Ash meet and they're in the computer class and he slides over to her in his chair and is like, hey, like I saw you staring at my, my Spectrum posters. You should come to a meeting. Yeah. Not a lot of people even clocked that Ash is trans, right? Uh- and so, like, they just assumed, like, maybe he was just, like, a cis, straight kid that was, like, leading the gay, straight alliance in right. high school. And so it's it really... It could almost be, like, seem problematic for a second. Right. Yeah. And so it's really... It's going to be really interesting for those people who maybe thought that mm. um, for episode eight to come out and him to just very briefly talk about his transness yeah. and utter the word for them to be like, oh... Shit. Yeah, now it makes sense. It makes sense. <laughs> but I like that because I'm starting to see that more. We saw that in Euphoria where, like, you know, Hunter Schaefer didn't say that she was trans. Like, I don't I don't even think that word was mentioned until, like, this last season. Like, mm-hmm. I think it was, like, brief in the first season. Yeah. And I loved that because they still told her story and they showed her, you know, when she was younger and all that stuff. But they never were like, here's the transgender character, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Because I, I really don't think it should be like that. It's just people, you know? And obviously we need, like, the the representation out there so we need people to know the character's trans but I like when it's a little more like subtle yeah I mean like I think with all of us like my transness is probably the least fun thing about me (laughs) you know like it's the least exciting thing about me yeah you know what is the most exciting thing about you oh my god I don't know am I that exciting (laughs) I think you're fun I don't know when you drink you're really fun When I drink, yeah, 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 for sure. Um, no, you're fun all the time. You're just always good vibes. Um, yeah, the vibes, man. We're all about the vibes. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, I've lived so many lives in, in a small amount of time, you know? Like, I'm a drummer. Um, I'm an actor. I'm an artist. Um, I was a publicist. Yeah. I worked at a gym. I lived in my car. Like, yeah. you know, like, I've done, like, all these things that, like... Yeah that is interesting to me right and my transness is not really that interesting to me because it's how i've always been you know well your transness was interesting to me because you obviously we've known each other since pre-transition really great transition huh that was a really good transition (laughs) (laughs) and um i you know i saw you transition Mm -hmm. in front of my eyes and we weren't even that close yet i remember it was a little more like friends through friends kind of vibe and 
you were like so influential for me because I was like watching it happen and I was like, oh my God, that's how I feel. I want to be like, I want to be doing what he's doing. And, you know, also you were the f first person other than Arlo that I told I was transitioning. Do you remember I, that? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I know exactly where we were. Yeah. We were at the satellite. We were at a, like a queer club together. Yeah. And you and I weren't even like close yet. And I remember just feeling like comfortable and like safe like I could. And I realized in that moment, I was like, whoa, I told Jordan before I even told like my best friends or like my siblings. Yeah. And one of my favorite things is that like you immediately like hugged me and were mm -hmm. so excited. And it was like, that was such a big moment for me. I remember I like left that, that event like so happy because I was like, like anybody I had kind of started to tell, like give like little hints here and there, only negative responses. Like, are you sure? Why would you want that? Think about it. No, that's not really you. Like, blah, blah, blah. So you were the first person that like congratulated me and wanted to like take a shot with me. Like, mm -hmm. you know? So it was like such a good feeling. Because it's something that should be celebrated, Hell you know? Yeah. yeah. Like, and I think more often than not, we're portrayed as these people who go through such a tough time because we do. Yeah. Some of us more than others. I understand yeah. my privilege in, in being white and passing mm -hmm. because that was a goal for me. It's not a goal for everyone. Right. Um, but there's a lot of privilege that comes with that. Yeah. But it, it all should be celebrated and it should be talked about because mm -hmm. we do have the capability of making our own family mm -hmm. like you guys have done yeah. mm -hmm. and like we have done as a family. Um, and be happy you know yeah. and celebrate celebrate that joy we just talked about this in the last episode how we really want to like show queer and trans people who have found success in life and are happy it's not all tragedy and you're right, right we all do go through hard things like i have a million stories about that and i think you know the media always wants to portray those stories because obviously it hooks people people like the drama but in reality like there's so much more amazing, great, positive, wholesome aspects of being a trans person in this world than there is negative. And obviously, like we said, not for everyone. There are people who obviously have such a different experience and I recognize my privilege as well, but I think it's so important to highlight stories like yours. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you have had, there, you've told me your past and you've told me things that have happened and like, look where you are now. Yeah. You've gotten through, you've come out on the other end, you're so happy and successful. I've watched it happen in front of my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to add something? I thought you were going to say something. It was so far gone now. Oh. <laughs> I heard a little like... Eh. Yeah, I was gonna, but it was like three subjects ago. <laughs> oh. Okay, so let's go back to playing Ash. Um, do you feel like... or Actually, I guess you as an actor. Like, do you feel like you want to play like mostly trans roles because of that representation? Or are you trying to be like, you know, I just want to be seen as like a male actor? I think my specific goal is, you know... I, I am playing the trans character yeah. for the representation, but I think it goes even further than that to allow us into spaces where cis men yeah. are playing these roles. If I'm just as talented and capable of playing the roles, let me play the role. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So my specific goal during PLL and after PLL is I want to play just a regular good dude. Yeah. I want to be... I want to have a seat at the table with these other guys because yeah. there's no reason why I shouldn't. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Um, and I think me living openly has been a struggle with mm -hmm. that because I have always been very open on the internet. Mm -hmm. Now I'm a little bit more reserved about what I share right. because there is a fear that if casting finds out that I am trans, that they won't bring me in right. to play those roles. Yeah, let's talk about that. Like, you know, you're an actor in Hollywood. I, I did this too, but I did it like pre-transition. I wanted to stop while I was on my transition for like, honestly, a lot of things we're talking about. And I remember when I was starting to go by like non-binary and be more like trans mask, like they would still like put me out for lesbian roles or like you said, like not bring me to the table at all. Have you noticed that kind of treatment in general with auditions, with self tapes? Not yet. Not yet. Um, a majority of the roles that I am reading for now are cis male roles. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, I still obviously go in for, for trans roles. Mm -hmm. I don't think that will ever stop, and I don't know that I ever want it to stop. Yeah. Um, it's an interesting line to, yeah. to walk. Um, but I, I personally have not experienced that, but I, I do know that that exists. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. And I mean, like, going for these, I guess you would say just, like, cis roles, like, do you feel, do you feel like you feel like have to still like disclose like maybe to like people on set or would you like, let's say you booked just a cis man role. Would you just literally like never talk about it? Or do you think it's like something you would almost like still bring to the table once you were there? Like for comfort reasons. Yeah. I think like 
once I got there, I, I don't want to, I'm not going to hide those things by myself. Yeah. Um, and if they just, you know, went to my Instagram and did one swipe, yeah. <laughs> I think they'd probably be able to figure it out. <laughs> um, but going back to like it not being the most interesting thing about me, like yeah. I don't lead conversations with that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Did you know for a long time or was it something that you realized later in life? About transitioning? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I knew. <laughs> um, my mom used to bribe me as a child. It's really sweet. My mom and I have a really lovely relationship with it. Um, I was like four or five, maybe six. I'm bad with age. Mm. Um, and I would go to like the department store to go shopping and I'd beeline straight for the men's section. I did the same thing. And my mom would be like, oh my God, like, uh, uh, okay, you can get one thing from the boys section and two from the girls. Yeah. So like that was her way like back then of like yeah. handling it. Yeah. Um, and she called my aunt who has since passed away mm. um, and was like, you know, I think we've got a little bit of a situation. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it hurts, like at that time, she probably thought the situation was that I was gay. Mm. Yeah, um, I think that's the first assumption. Right. Um, and then I came out for the first time in high school. I was going to a Catholic school, playing soccer, uh -huh. had a girlfriend, was closeted. I don't know how nobody picked up on it. <laughs> I think they, I'm sure they did, Yeah. you yeah. know? Um, and then I came out uh, drunk at a concert Oh. Because I just could not hold it what in What do you mean, like, come like, to who? To just the group. Oh, like, the group you were with? Just the massive group of people I went to high school <laughs> with. Oh. And they weren't surprised. Oh. When did you come out to your parents? In high school? The first time. The first time? Yeah. Um, it wasn't by choice, unfortunately. How did it happen? I don't think you've actually told me this I don't think I have. Um, I lied about prom. I was dating a girl who was a year older than me. She might have been two years older than me. I'm not sure. Um... And I asked for money for a dress for prom. And I went and I rented a tux. Mm. And I called my best friend, Amy, and I said, hey, can I get ready at your house? And I left and I got ready at her house and I got in a tux and I took photos with my best friend and her family, got in the car, went to dinner for prom, didn't go to actual prom because again, it was, high, it was Catholic school, mm. changed really quick, went back home, threw a party for prom, everybody came over afterwards. <laughs> But then I kept a photo of my, my girlfriend at the time and I in my car. Mm. My dad went through my car. Oh, mm. damn. And then they sat me down. They just sat you down and were like, are you gay? Yeah. And at that point, I was just like in tears. And I was like, yes. <laughs> I <can't help laughs> uh, yes, I am. <laughs> don't, don't kill me. <laughs> what happened? What was the response? Um, again, my mom immediately was super supportive. We love um, your mom. We stand your mom. We do. We stand Annie. She's the best. <laughs> If you ever you need a mother, like she's she's constantly like, I will be anyone's mom. Oh. <laughs> um, and my dad, it took him some time to get on board. Yeah, he eventually did, and, and then, then didn't again. Out, yeah, you came out the <laughs> second time, and like I've talked about this so many times on this podcast, how different it was for me coming out gay than trans. Yeah, like, uh, uh, almost opposites, and you wouldn't think it would be that different, but you know also with your story that it was. Tell everyone what it was like coming out the second time. Yeah, so I started my medical transition five years ago, July. Um, and I flew home to Atlanta to tell my mom in person. And she was like, well, I'm not surprised. Yeah. <laughs> I always knew that. And it was fine. Which, again, I recognize my privilege in, it, in having at least one parent support, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I knew with my dad that I would need to really break it down, mm -hmm. like get scientific with it. Yeah. yeah. And so I sent him an email and I broke it down. I explained everything and um, didn't work. Yeah. Mm. He didn't respond the best, right? Uh, he didn't respond at all. Yeah. Actually. And Is then, that when you guys stopped talking like that was it? Or was it? No, little... I kept trying. Yeah. I kept trying. Um, and then it got to a point where he was just blatantly disrespecting my pronouns. Right my name and I was like how did your mom feel about that oh she's <laughs> they're not together yeah were they split up then mm. when this was happening yeah my parents split up in high school oh got you got you got you um, okay but I was she <laughs> she has tried had to bite her tongue yeah I've had to be like just let it go yeah gotcha because also like I've discussed this before too like as the trans person in the family you almost feel like it's your fault that like people are arguing and like it's like splitting apart and I've done this where, like, I literally would, like, rather just stay away so that, like, other people don't have to, like, argue over me or, mm -hmm. like, 
my sister who always defends me doesn't have to like get in and like defend my pronouns. Like, so I just stay away because yeah. I'm like, I don't even want to have to put people in that position. I think that's kind of like a burden you have to like carry as a trans person. Did you kind of feel that in that, those moments where like your mom was defending you and your dad was like dead naming you? Yeah, I mean like, I think my situation is a little bit unique in the fact that like my parents didn't speak. Oh, they already kind of weren't They speaking. already weren't mm-hmm. speaking. Yeah. So it was more so like, just been like, mom, I'm good. Like, yeah. it's gonna be okay. But even though I was hurting, right. I'm not anymore because I made my peace with it. Yeah. Um, because I mean, we went three years without saying a word to each other. Yeah. And you guys are just starting to communicate a little bit, correct? Or not anymore. No. Okay. I mean, maybe if there's someone listening who's maybe going through what you're going through, what helped you find peace? Because maybe that will help someone. I just finally had to let go of the anger. Yeah. You know, and I don't think there's a linear way of doing it. Yeah. There's no right or wrong way of doing it. But I think for me, I had to realize that like, I'm the one that's holding the hot stone. You know, he's not. Yeah. He's living his life. Right. Not, maybe he's thinking about it. I don't know. But if I continue to hold this hot stone, like my hand's burnt. Yeah. His hand isn't. Exactly. And he's the one that like, will have to take that feeling with him to the grave. I don't want to do that. Exactly. Right. So it's sort of just like pretty much letting go and just realizing that you just want to be happy for yourself and not yeah. really holding on to these people that are doing that to you. And I know there's like people that are listening who might still be like living in their home. So that's easier said right. than done but I think ultimately that is kind of the way I've dealt with it as well there was a point where it was really really bothering me what was going on with my family and then finally this just one night it hit me it was after a giant blowout I think I probably told you about that and <laughs> um, I was just finally like I don't care anymore because if I care this is only just going to bring me down and since I did that and just let go like it's actually made it easier to when I do have to interact with my family. Like I just feel more like lighthearted. I don't feel this like heaviness, mm-hmm. you know. Exactly. So, what was it like as a trans person on set for Pretty Little Liars? I was pleasantly surprised. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm a part of the boys cast, mm-hmm. and I don't have a lot of cis male friends. Yeah. Right. And I've always wanted to. I just have not had the opportunity to. Yeah. Um, so being included in the boys club yeah. Yeah. was really affirming yeah, for me. I could see that. Um, and all of them were so, I mean, they're my bestest friends now. Yeah. Hey. Um, there's like a, a <laughs> they're not my best friend. They're my bestest <laughs> friends. Just kidding. And you're invited too. Hell yeah. I'm in the boys club. You're in the boys club. <laughs> Welcome. Fuck yeah. Oh, um, bleep. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, that part of it was really cool. I mean, mm. we were thrown up in the middle of nowhere, upstate New York. Yeah, tell everyone how long you were filming. Nine I remember when you, months. Nine months. I remember he left and I was like, oh, I'll see him soon. Didn't see him. It felt like a year. Like, it felt it like our lives was, had like changed in all that time. It did. I and mean, it was like right post pandemic, like just getting out of it. Like not mm-hmm. even really out of it, right? Not really even out yeah. of it. Um, last August, yeah. you know, I got noticed with like three days four days they're like you're shipping off to new york and i was like cool the city they're like no you're shipping off to upstate new york it's two hours from the city and i was like middle of nowhere so we like are in the woods and it's basically like a big summer camp of a job um Mm -hmm. the boys were super inclusive the girls were super inclusive the cat i mean the set like you know the costumers were shout out to the costumers because as you can imagine as someone who has been so physically uncomfortable with their body yeah. for such a long time and being in these fittings where people are like, hey, like, let's put you in this outfit. Yeah. Like, I've been on sets where they're like, you're wearing this and that's it. Yeah, same. And, it's and so there's like little things that only you pick up. Like yeah. my hips or like, do my shoulders look broad enough? Or like yeah. my legs look long enough because I'm on the shorter side. Like yeah. all these little th- things that like nobody thinks about, but like yeah. they were so caring and attentive and asking me about, what I felt comfortable in. Mm -hmm. And that's like something that I never experienced. That's amazing, I love that. And like, basically, so you're all just kind of like, did they separate the boys and girls like in the areas? (laughs) They did. And did everyone start to mingle when you guys weren't filming? We all hung out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we all hung out. Like, it's it's crazy to think about that you work 15 hour days and then you leave and you still want to hang out with these people. Yeah. But like, summer camp. <laughs> it's literally like summer camp. I feel like sets like really bond you to people. Like I really met do. people on set that like you're with each other so much and it's such like a like vulnerable place to be because you're in your like, this is literally your livelihood. This mm-hmm. is your, you know, creative expression, everything. And I think it's like, you kind of never forget those people. Like never. Yeah. Mm. 
Especially like that. I've never done like nine months. That's crazy. Never. I mean, and especially like in a place where like you don't get to just fuck off and go to the city, you yeah. know, like you are in this remote place. The show covers really, really heavy content. Yeah. And so I know with like a lot of the girls, they were filming these scenes that would take it out of them. I mean, yeah. like take it out of them. So it was like really awesome on the weekends to just like be able to play spike ball together and yeah. just like be light and be fun and be like yeah. young adults again, you know? 100%. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And did you, did anyone almost get to a point because you were in like upstate New York where like they were kind of going crazy, like where you're just like, I need to get out of here? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I What'd think we do? all were. I mean, I've called you before yeah. and been like, I'm losing my mind. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm in a hotel room for nine months. Yeah. But I mean, like there's worse things in the world, you know? Yeah. Because, like, Francesca does, like, the reality show, and same thing. Like, she's, Well, at like, least I can stuck. have my phone. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. she's, like, stuck, and it's, like, it makes me, like, think, like, I don't know if I could do that. Like, just being, like, so closed off. Obviously, I could. If I, like, booked Pretty Little Liars, I'd, of course I'd do it. I'll do anything <laughs> for Pretty Little Liars original <laughs> sin, <Yeah>. okay? <laughs> Seriously. But, okay, so since the show's finally out, and you're, I, I'm assuming, like, you're starting to notice, like, I remember us talking about, like, whoa, this is, like, so big. Like, you're starting to probably notice, like, people commenting and what, what are people saying about your character <laughs> or is it like a positive response like it is yeah. yeah yeah it's a positive response i was laughing in my head because the fans are so amazing so again like if you haven't watched the show yet spoiler alert, um but you should watch it <laughs> ash loves his pot oh okay. loves marijuana and so they have created the fans have created a group chat on twitter called ash's weed dealers <laughs> and they've superimposed my face on a giant pot leaf <laughs> and that's the logo <laughs> that's it so you already oh have like a fandom God. happening i do i have a fandom and they're the best and that's they amazing. say ash is the best boy did you okay so i love these kinds of questions like when i've been on set you have to smoke like fake cigarettes like fake pot like drink fake alcohol what was it oh uh, cbd it was cbd yeah okay like i didn't even get that they literally put like it was like the grossest mm -hmm. like i don't even know what it was like yeah it was a cbd vape pen so that's not that bad it slapped though. <laughs> it slapped. Was there any THC in it? I don't think so. Oh, okay. Because it's in New York, it's not legal. <laughs> like, oh, I don't right, think right, so. Right. Yeah. You're just like, you but actually chill. are high the yeah, whole time. Yeah, I was like, chill. I like, kept having to like, take little breaks and like looking at our amazing director, Lisa, and being like, I just need one second, please. Yeah. She's no, like, yeah, because I've it. had people like hit CBD pens like over and over again because they think like it, if you hit it enough, you like get a yeah, change. Yeah, totally. For sure. <laughs> All right, um, so now that you have this giant show out and you, you live in LA, you're this actor, what's next? Like, what's, what do you, do you have something happening right now or are you just, what do you want to happen? All of, all of the above, answer all of that. <laughs> <laughs> Hard hitting questions. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, what do you see? What do you want for your future? I Where mean, I, ho I hope going? to keep working, you know? Yeah. I mean, that what would be. What do you mean, like, do you picture, like, do you want to be, like, in these, like, Oscar winning films or do you want to keep doing yeah, series? Yeah, I mean, of course. Or? Like, I, I, my dream of dream of dreams is that PLL goes on for a very long time yeah. and in the off time I get to do, do a projects. really awesome mm -hmm. film. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That would be my dream of all dreams. To have job security in this industry is crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Definitely. <laughs> so I would love if we got a second season, a third season and Definitely on the side, like, happen. you know, get to shoot some really cool films. Wasn't the um, trailer for Pretty Little Liars like one of the most watched? Like, what did yeah. it beat out? Um, it, it beat out so much. I think it was only behind the Friends reunion. Whoa. Euphoria season two. That's crazy. Um, and, and one other thing, but it was massive. It's just so crazy that you went from like literally just like doing like kind of smaller things to that so quickly yeah. but I guess that's how it happens right you just need that one you just need that one thing yeah that one and, thing. and you know what like everyone always says the same thing it's like what's meant for you is meant for you yeah. and as an artist you roll your eyes you know because it's yeah. like no like I'm an actor like my job is to act my job is to bring this character to life but it's true yeah, like it's yeah. true. I I identify with so much of Ash you know Tell us. I always have just been unapologetically myself. Yeah, you have. And, Definitely, 100%. And life. he is. Yeah. And it's like, he doesn't give a shit yeah. about anything. He walks through the hallways and he's cool and he's <laughs> he does his thing and he is a leader of a group of people, which I like to think that like I have always tried my best to do is, mm -hmm. you know, be a leader within our community, an example. Yeah. Um, and I love that they're also not sh like portraying Ash as like a lot of times like trans people are portrayed as like 
anxiety and depressed and like suicidal and like all these things like i like mm-hmm. that you're saying he like struts through the halls and he's like proud and yeah he i mean the the breakdown of ash is that he's dripping with swag yeah. <laughs> and it's like that's the coolest thing because like you're that. right like a lot of times like we're portrayed as these people who just like are unconfident don't have any friends and it's mm-hmm. like that is true for yeah. everyone you know just like everyone like we're a yeah. majority of people you know yeah right um, any teenager any teenager yeah. mm-hmm. it's just like a trope for any type of teenager right. whether you're trans or, or not exactly do you feel like now that you've had this like major series you have this big platform all these eyes on you do you feel like there's a pressure because you were just saying like you've always tried to kind of be a leader in our community and I agree with that um do you feel like a more of a pressure now because there's these young people looking up to you as this trans man who's an actor and who's out there and doing these roles more so than ever yeah more so than ever have you had young people reach out to you saying stuff like totally like what tell us (laughs) I I did I don't know off the top of my head. I mean, like, what kind of stuff, like, have they... Um, a majority of the stuff is just, like, thank you for your representation. Your yeah. representation matters. Like, it's helped me out so well. Yeah. Um, I've had a kid who was going to the same high school that I used to go to, going through his transition, deciding whether or not he wanted to stay at that high school. Wow. Um, In Georgia? Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, and so I helped out a little bit with that. I, I mean, I try to respond to as many people as I can while also keeping my autonomy. Yeah, I know. I know what you mean. Like, people are always like, oh, do you respond to everyone? I'm like, I could not mentally do that. Like, yeah. it's a lot yeah. on me. And like, yeah, yeah also, like, some, maybe there's a day I also just don't want to talk about being trans. Maybe I'm having a dysphoric day or something. So it's kind of that balance you have mm-hmm. to find. Right. You know? Yeah, and, it, and I think, like, it's worth it to note that, like, we do maybe see those messages and we do appreciate yeah. you reaching exactly, out. Exactly, But yes. we might just not have, like, the capacity in our day to respond but yeah. like you are loved and you yeah. are cared about and your support 100%. means yeah. the world to us yeah i always mm-hmm. say too like people have asked me like oh like do you get like annoyed when like if someone comes up to you i'm like never like never. if you ever want to come up to me mm-hmm. come up to us like we love and appreciate mm-hmm. that yeah sometimes it catches us off guard or whatever maybe we get awkward but like oh i always we get love so everyone. awkward <laughs> Our i had my up. first one ever <laughs> when i was still in new york and i was at the gym and this guy came up to me and he was like hey are you jordan and i was like <laughs> yeah and he was like I don't even God I don't even remember What he like said Like he saw you from Instagram Because the show hadn't come out yet right? The show hadn't come out so yet So like I was Instagram. like Oh maybe like He works on our set Yeah <laughs> And he's like Coming to say hi I'm like How would anyone know Who I am yeah. Little old me Like nobody knows me <laughs> And he was like, no, I'm a massive fan of PLL. And like, oh. I'm so excited to see you on the show. And I was so taken That's back awesome. by it. And I think I even yeah. texted you and Britt yeah, And I, I was like, like yeah. I, I feel like I looked like the biggest <laughs> jerk because I was so taken back by it. That's what I do. Sometimes yeah. sometimes I almost feel like when people come up to us, I almost seem mean, but I promise I'm not. I yeah. just get so nervous. and I don't know yeah. what to say. Well, I, it's I, like imposter syndrome. Yeah, like yeah. I get, I literally get caught off. Guard. That's what gets me is like, I'll just be like at Target, like shopping. And then someone comes up to me. And so I'm like, ah, oh, uh, yeah, hi. And I'm like, so yeah. awkward. And I don't want them to think I'm being like, don't talk to I love when people come up to us. Yeah, we, I yeah. just get shy. Yeah, same. And you just wait. Like when this show is like fully out and like you, you're going to be, a lot of people are going to be coming up to you for sure. I can see it. And please do. Yeah. I feel like almost Ash fits you more, like the name wise. Like, I don't want to call you Jordy anymore. <laughs> Thank you so much. That means so much yeah. for the name that I chose. Yeah. I like Ash better. <laughs> Asshole. It fits you. <laughs> it's also my dead name initial. <laughs> oh. I, I actually like forgot about your dead name. Like, I don't even really, like it literally until you said that, I forgot what your dead name was. Bro, it was so funny. I was laying in bed yesterday and I like wanted to hear what my voice used to sound like. Mm-hmm. And I pulled up a Snapchat and it, the video wasn't on me, but I was speaking in the background and I didn't even clock that that was my voice. Really? I didn't even recognize it. Yeah. yeah, Francesca and Chris like played a video of me in an old interview, like when I did American Satan. And I was like, I had to like walk out of the room. I was like, what? No, 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 that's not me. No. <laughs> And like they've they've never heard my voice. They only know me since right. I transitioned. So they were like, "What?" Isn't like, that an interesting situation? Also, because up until recently, a majority of the people that were in my life knew me before, mm-hmm. and now a majority of the people don't. don't. And it's really interesting. Actually, great. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But it's also really interesting because like I'll t- I'll like show if, like bring up a photo of my past like as if I were doing it to you. Yeah. And they're like, "Whoa." And I'm like, oh, shit, I forgot you didn't know me then. Yeah. I mean, but I literally, like, if you were to bring that up to me, I would have to, like, dig deep to even remember. Yeah, I mean, would, like, same. Like, it's literally, it doesn't even exist. It's like a whole separate human. 
I, I always say the same thing to him. Like I've had five lives. Like mm-hmm. I literally feel like I've had like pregnant teen, like young mom, lesbian, <laughs> non-binary, and now trans man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So we always ask these two questions to everybody. Would 10-year-old Jordan be proud of Jordan now? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I don't know how he wouldn't be. I mean, I think a, like a lot of trans youth, um, when I was 13, mm-hmm. I made an attempt on my life because I just didn't think that I could do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and the fact that I'm still alive today and I'm on a massive television show and you're happy and I'm happy I mean success is not equal happiness but like it definitely helps yeah yeah um you have good friends I have good you friends have good people around you your mom yeah everything and it's yeah he would for sure I, I agree. 100% agree because we are proud of you too mm-hmm. oh I love you guys we're always so proud I text you that all the time I'm like Jordy I'm so proud of you <laughs> all we do is text each other back and forth I'm so proud I know and then like I, I don't have Arlo's number, but I would text them also and say, I'm so proud of you. And I know, whenever that's I funny, see your like, face, I'm like, I'm so proud of you. I think, like, when you make your own family like that, like, we've all really decided to be, like, so supportive of one another. Yeah. Like, if any of us ever have, like, a project where, like, we're there, we'll post you, we're mm-hmm. so proud of you. Like, I love that about us, about Same. our friend group. Okay, and then our last question is, if you could be known for leaving anything on this earth, what do you want to be known for? What do you want your legacy to be? Um, I think I would like my legacy to be to just allowing one person to know that they're, they're seen, you know, Mm -hmm. one trans kid in in the middle of nowhere, Georgia, who might not feel seen, know of me and be like, I can do this. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Maybe that exact push that you needed when you were 13. Exactly. Exactly. I feel the exact same way. That's why I do everything I do. Mm. A- Men. Hell yeah. Well, this was so, so good. I mean, you know, you and I could just talk t- together Forever. for hours <laughs> anyways, but um, I love everything you said. And I think it's so important. And I think your character on the show is so mm. important. I think you as a human are so important. So thank you so much for coming and doing this for our season finale. This is such a big episode. And mm. now we're going to play the animal game for yep. some of our listeners and viewers. You may have seen, we played this with Emily Grayson. It was hilarious. We made it really more queer than we normally do. So we'll probably do that again. But uh, <laughs> basically the animal game is one of us thinks of an animal and then the other people try to ask guess, questions ask questions and try to guess what the animal is in yep. as few questions as possible it's mm. really simple me and Ariel have been playing it since probably like three or four. Oh yeah I was so little yeah like you guys were little. three and four together <laughs> huh yes. you guys were three and four together <laughs> yeah I said three or four <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> okay so you go first think of one. Oh, um oh I'm putting a spot axolotl <laughs> I know I that's always thought. their go-to I, I have because it's my one of my favorite animals um but I'm trying to think trying to think quickly um okay i have it go ask a question first does it swim not like kind of not like it knows how to swim but it doesn't it it does it float hippo it's in water areas but you wouldn't see it like you know is it just like stationary no does it fly no is it exclusively in water or does it um, come out? There's different types. No, it's not in water. It's around water. Well, it can be in water. Like, so <laughs> <laughs> there's a couple different types of this. Ones you see more by the sand. Ones you kind of see more in the water area. Crab? Mm-hmm. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Clap track. <laughs> Good job. Okay, you think of one. <laughs> this game. I feel like crabs are gay. Like we were saying, like each animal queer. either gives like straight, bi, specifically gay, not or queer. gay. No, yeah, like I feel like, they're I queer. Feel like I'm getting gay. Really? Yeah. I'm what getting, are you getting from a I'm crab? Queer. I don't know. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not gonna label the crab because you should. we label don't know. the crab. We don't want to ever label anyone, you know? Yeah. Well, <laughs> crabs are gay. Don't label the crabs. Don't. <laughs> Just don't label the crabs, don't man. Label the crabs. <laughs> hey, do you well, think when I had crabs? <laughs> <laughs> Cut that. <laughs> Cut that. <laughs> Um, okay. What does it eat? What does it not eat? It eats everything. everything. Does it eat meat and veggies? Meat, veggies, yeah. Okay. An omnivore, that is called, for those of you who don't know. Um, <laughs> did, where, does it fly? No. Does it swim? Like it could? I don't know that it could. Is it I mean, a maybe it could, yeah. No. 
Mm. What did you say? Raccoon. Where do you find it? Like, is it in a jungle or forest? Forest. Or forest, okay. What size is it? Big. Really big? A bear? <laughs> yes. Hell yeah. <laughs> they do. They eat fish and berries. Yeah. Yeah. All right. They um, love their I'll salmon. Now. Okay. Where does it live? A forest. I don't know what else to ask. <laughs> <laughs> and it's definitely straight. Like, it has straight vibes. Thank you. Straight and cis. <laughs> cis hat? Cis hat. Yeah, cis hat vibes. Um, so that'll tell you a lot right there. You should be able to guess it by the next that doesn't, guess. That doesn't. Is it an apex predator? <laughs> no. Monkey? Mm -mm. You have to ask questions before you guess. Oh, okay. <laughs> I did. Uh, um, what does it eat? Um, I think like worms and bugs. What? Yeah. Worms and bugs. Does it fly? Yeah, it does. It's a bird? Eagle. It's a type of bird. Falcon, mm. hawk, pigeon. Red, no. The red one. The red Cardinal. A robin? Mm -hmm. No. No. Eagle. The way you both are looking at me is, is like it, you're staring into my soul. Is it big? It's small. I mean, not like hummingbird small. Is it a butterfly? No, it's like this big. What color is it? I think like it has like a red top. What? <laughs> woodpecker? Yeah. Woody the woodpecker. I don't, I don't think, I think that has gay vibes. I get straight. I get gay. Really? Woodpeckers just seem so yeah. gay to me. We're divided right now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, that was so fun. Thank any you for playing the animal game. <laughs> well, of, well, that was so fun. Any, any <laughs> you guys the, bullied me, but it's okay. Any of the people who, like, don't get that that is ironic, like, if there's any kind of more, like, conservative people that like watch this and I don't think, think conservative people watch us well I'm just saying if anybody like that sees this clip and they're like they're trying to label the animals <laughs> they're gonna they say, them next? pronouns yeah. what's next yeah <laughs> it's Literally. ironic chill your life <laughs> yeah obviously we know all animals are queer bro that <laughs> anyways so this episode of interview with my kid was so amazing thank you so much Jordan for thank being you. here I couldn't have asked for me. a better last guest yes bestie Amazing actor, an amazing interview. Thank you so much. And you're such you're such a good uncle to our oh, oh, he's my uncle? Yeah. <laughs> uncle Jordy. Did you not know this? Yeah. I did not know this. This is news? That's yeah. alarming. I know. Wow. Actually, if I die, More you go to More of a Jordan. godfather. You yeah, you didn't know you go I'll to Jordan. I'll take godfather. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the godfather. <laughs> exactly. With yeah. your rings? Yeah. Yeah. That you stole? All I know. Right. I still have some of them. <laughs> Remember, I was like, you can have one. Yeah. <laughs> He shot the podcast and someone was like, I love your rings. Yeah. Like, ha -ha. I was like, thank you. They're Jordans. Go ahead and plug your socials into that camera so everyone can find you. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Jordan L. Gonzalez. And make sure you tune in to Pretty Little Liars Original Sin only on HBO Max every Thursday. But tonight is your last chance, so you better catch up. Season finale. Season finale gets oh, crazy. Yeah. You well, find out who A is. Double season finales. Look double season finales. Okay, thank you everyone for joining us for this season of Interview with My Kid. This season has been seriously amazing. We thank you so much for tuning in and viewing and listening mm -hmm. and all of your support. Thank you for listening thank to you. my 14-year-old. Yep. They're amazing. <laughs> and yeah, tune in for next season. Yep. Um, we're gonna, we will be back. So make sure you catch us on all streaming platforms and watch us on the Pass Your Bedtime YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you.